London, England. This is tape four. Um, uh, uh, yes. We were talking about the march, and, uh, and you were saying about Demer. Oh, yes. Well, I, I will come into that before I forget. I've seen him in, once in Israel. just shows you, he, he recognized me. I recognize him, of course. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, uh, they call it Haskara. I don't know if you heard of the name. Uh, no, Haskara. I think so. Every year they meet on this particular big uh, uh, place. Um, it's a burial place uh, near Tel Aviv. I forgot if, near Yafa, yeah, not Yafa, yeah, um, near Tel Aviv, but near Batyam, sort of, somewhat there. I, th I think they call it Haskara. And in, in, in this particular the burial grounds, huge, that the, the people from all over the, um, Europe, where there were camps, um, taken to the camps, uh, even from Greece, and, and as far as Italy, Greece, whatever. Every town, every uh, country which they come from, and every town has uh, a stone. And, and they're written from where. And so he was standing there, and there was, uh, uh, we went there because of that, the Ascara, I think it's called Ascara. Yes, I think so. And he recognized. Me. Any? Hmm. So he says, Do you know me? You remember me? I said, Of course. Anyway, he says, I said, um, Do you remember me? He says, Yes. He says, I had all the young fellas on my mind. No, he, he was he was a very decent person. He says he said I had I had all the youngsters on my mind, and I do recognize you. I remember you. Yeah. Yes. Um. Anyway, so we got okay from the march. We got into a place called some horrible place, Gross Rosen. There is the first time I've seen people, dead bodies, loaded, like the farmers load straw, like, uh, loading straw on a wagon, full, being pushed, not even pulled by horses towards the crematorium. I remember. Anyway, we didn't warm up there even. From all the time, Oh, um, uh, from all the time, we were given, which we walked, we were given uh, some bread and uh, maybe, I think, a piece of fat or lard or something, and out from the camp towards the trains and loaded on coal wagons. How long had you marched for? towards oh, to Gosfosen? No, no. Day in, day out. God knows. A long time. I mean, first of all, uh, who had the mind to count the days? Even? We knew it comes and goes. And that was all. And to stay alive, somehow. Well, talking about that and going back there. So when the people saw, the, you know, in the fields, there were still the sticks from the cabbages, let's say, from cabbage, which they cut off and leave the sticks, farmers usually, everywhere, I suppose, the same. And people tried to run there and get some, you know. They were sitting in the ground in the snow. They were shot on the spot. And when the, f and, and yeah, they didn't allow that, of course, thinking maybe they want to run away or something, or even, even not, what's that, nothing. 
So uh, even the farmers, when they were asked to to give uh, some potatoes, they, they boiled and, and uh, whatever. Who managed to get one, got one, who didn't, didn't. But one day there was a rush to that thing. And, um, and people, hungry animals, and they were shot there and there. There was more blood in that big thing and dead bodies than potatoes. They were straight away. And so, okay, coming back now to the Gross Rosen, when we arrived there, they put us on those trains and the guards and open trains. And, uh, and I don't remember how long. And it took us um, day and night. Meanwhile, in the ways uh, there, there was bombing, there was machine gunning. From the, from the Allies were there. Anyway, we got into Buchenwald, and even in Buchenwald, the trains were bombed in Weimar. The town is called Weimar. And those open wagons, well, I, uh, to explain that uh, what we didn't want to give them any food or any water. The water was a bit of snow, that was all, on the journey in those open cattle tracks. Not cattle tracks, because they were open, cold things. Cattle they carry in under their roofs. <laughs> I mean, if they... And so uh, we got into Buchenwald, and even there, there was, um, there was, there was trains, um, trucks, uh, people, and, and, and the, there was soon after bombardment. And anyway, from there we were loaded on a, on a small uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, open little trucks again, which Buch uh, Buchenwald was outside the town, Weimar, which is, I don't know how far, and uh, we were brought into Buchenwald. And then the, the, the whatever I had photos hidden and things like that, we were stripped, um, disinfected, and uh, the clothes, everything was taken away, whatever, something. Uh, we were given different things, whatever they had. Uh, one, uh, maybe one shoe this color or, or this size or whatever, whatever came on the hand anyway. And there was, we were, uh, well, everybody was crawling, not only on the feet, but uh, everybody had crawlies on them because we were not washed and, and had no, no way of getting cleaned or whatever on, the, on coming into Gross Rosen and from the march and, and and so everything was uh, taken away uh, and uh, given uh, whatever came on the hand, uh, whatever. And so uh, we, uh, we, well, yes, uh, we felt c clean already. I mean, we pushed into a big place because it was overflowing with people already then from all different camps. And to a place they used to call, I remember they call it the cinema. It was a shed, wooden, big shed, big, with uh, uh, with uh, seats there, but uh, you know, not chairs, but long seats sort of thing. And uh, wherever somebody slept, slept because there was no bed there, on the floor, or wherever anybody found place. There was uh, lots of people pushed in there because they were overflowing from all kinds of different camps. And after a time, I don't remember how long it took, they pushed us, uh, the, they gave us um, people, uh, some were lucky to go into barracks. And this was the small camp, because Buchenwald is what they call the build-up camp, which is uh, built barracks of uh, bricks and so on. But this was this, what they call the quarantine camp, the small camp. And there, there were several hundred people in one barrack, three stories high, very long, and um, twice a day counting. Twice a day they counted. We were inside, they needed counting. And in the morning, the dead bodies were pushed out outside the door before, before, before they started counting. So they counted them as well, of course, naked, because everybody stripped whatever the others had when they were dead or, or before dying, I mean, naked skeletons. 
God knows how many a day. It depended on the days, how many. The little, then they counted them, then it took a long time before they managed to count us, you know, standing up. And uh, then little things came, like push trolleys, you know, then they took the dead bodies away and finished. That was uh, the end of uh, these people then. They took him to the crematorium, and uh, uh, once a day, we got sort of some kind of a soup. It was uh, very, very hungry there, and a slice of a piece of bread. And it was some fat, you know, some animal fat or something, a piece like that, something on, with the bread. That was the food, once a day. But some people didn't manage to eat even because they were killed for the bread. And that's no joke. It's, lots of people were murdered. But those horrible things, even one shoe was different than the other, but it was the shoes what I had. And then I'm on top of the third floor, sort of third high bed. I mean, one, two, three. But I must have one taken them off in the night, I suppose. There was no nothing there, no straw. No straw, there was a piece of rack or something, that was all. And that was still January, February. And suddenly in the morning the shoes are gone. Somebody pinched my shoes. Snow outside, cold, and they count in the morning, and count in the evening, and what am I supposed to do? Suddenly, I, I, there wasn't there wasn't my shoes. I recognized my shoes. One shoe was different than the other, whatever. And the size, I don't remember. <laughs> God knows. And suddenly, I see a fellow. And he was a Ukrainian, carrying shoes. He's trying to sell it. Well, I pinched it from somebody. They were not mine. I, mean, I could recognize them. At least I would know. And he wants so and so much bread, and so and so much whatever other things, shoes. I didn't have any bread, <laughs> and I didn't have any shoes. That was in the morning, like, and before going out to the appell, to the counting. So I looked at them and asked him what he wants and all that, and I looked at the things, shoes. And I went into the uh, cold, and I went into the um, capo, the one that is in charged of the block. There were hundreds of people in that block. The smell was awful. It was damp out, it was snow, it was cold, and so many people, and some of them laying the corners dead, God knows, till they find them or something. It was... Oh. And I told him, I says, that fellow over there, you see, pinched my shoes. And I can't go out. I can't go out on the appell. He said, what, he said? Pinch your shoes? Who, who is that? So I, I let them there all one, and uh, it says, well, so he takes the shoes, ah, I nearly got up and <laughs> tore the thing, this uh, block, block eldest they used to call it, the man from the block, and he goes like that with the shoes, he takes it from him, he goes like that and he said, can you tell me what they look like? You tell me what they look like if they're your shoes, tell me what they look like. I said, so and so, so and so, so and so, I looked at them before when he held them in his hand. What choice did I have? I can't walk without shoes out. It's snow and cold. All right, so he has a look at them, and he recognized all the symptoms that I mentioned, that they're my shoes. So he gave me the shoes, and he started hitting them. He hit them, because he sh How come you pinch somebody's shoes? So I had the shoes to put on. There was no choice. And from there, I had damage from the journey in my hand, and it was slow, swollen, and septic. There's only a little mark left, but at that time, the, the bandage that I got was paper. At the time, that was already in Buchenwald, because it was getting septic from the dirt, from the journey still. So, um, oh. anyway, he gave me the shoes and hit them. And so I had a pair of shoes, and then when I was, um, and, and then when I did, I, I um, when I went um, 
uh, still from the small camp, they used to call out who wants to go and uh, sort out the potatoes or carrots in, in the cellar underneath the kitchen uh, kitchens. Um, and uh, that, that is the, you can eat some there, but you mustn't take anything out. And that was so. What can you eat? A carrot or an onion? Potatoes are raw. All right. So then I decided I must take a few things out. So I, I, I put them in, in, in somewhere, wherever I could, and not a lot, but a few potatoes or, or carrots or onions, because my uncle was there and he looked very bad, and I wasn't very, very strong either. But I thought, well, anyway. When I got to the door, one of the prisoners, which uh, he was uh, assigned to, t uh, that was his job, and the same like us, but he was a Christian, and he came from my mm, area, Silesian type. You recognize them when they talk. They, they've got different accents. And so I, I spoke to him in German, but anyway, he found all this on me. And when I spoke to him, he, says, uh, he asked me where I come from, and I, so I told him uh, in German and uh, Silesia and so on. I said to him, he says, well, you're lucky. You come from my area. Otherwise, he says, you would go there. Go. Disappear, go away, and that was because I spoke to him in the way, and and naturally, of course, I knew the place. He told me where he comes from, and so he says, "You're lucky, go." And so that was that, and so from there I was uh, uh, they ask again volunteers, and also on the bombardment uh, when they bombed the Weimar, the town, they used to take us out to to. Um, clean the streets from the bomb, m bombs and the uh, rubble, whatever. And so uh, several times I was taken to go there, but sometimes people found maybe a broken jar with marmalade, glass or no glass, there was nothing. Glass, good. They had marmalade or something, or maybe some carrots or something or something, or, or whatever, something to, because several times, and and, um, and so when they ask uh, again that uh, they want to send people to another camp, something, and I thought my uncle at the time said, "Well, if you can't get out, go out." You know. Right? Anyway, again I I stood uh, and I volunteered, and I was standing like that, and they were looking, uh, asking, uh, and looking who who is, you know call out names and this and that. Why are you standing like that? I said, "Well, not, nothing, nothing." So when he looked at my hand, he says. Go. You're not going to be sent out. Away. Go back to the small camp. I want to get out of there. Anyway, the next time, some other time, I managed to to uh, to get out, and I was sent to uh, Altenburg, a munition factory. But a few people. But from there, they wanted to send me back. When they saw that, they wanted to send me back. Oh well. Luckily. The one of the couples, and it was an Austrian, as far as I remember, he somehow managed to make me stay there, which I was glad of course. Of course, there we had a shower every week or something, and it was a factory. And uh, but some people worked in the factory. Some people worked outside uh, in the digging and things, uh, hard work, and. Um, when, when people who wanted to go to the toilet, they had to ask the the the, the, the posten, called posten, the guard, uh, to be excused. They used to say, "Yes, you're going so much to the toilet because you eat so much. You're getting so much food that you have to run to the toilet." So it wasn't the case. The case was that diarrhea. Lots of people know that kind of thing. What was the food? I mean, it is, uh, it's a good thing it didn't last too long because not many would have survived there. Because the food was awful, the work was hard. And uh, then the Americans used to come in um, the planes and used to machine gun whatever they saw on the ground, they used to make, naturally. It, uh, it, um, and one day, 
they, that little camp there was wasn't that big, but I don't know. Maybe a hundred people, maybe a hundred and fifty, I don't know exactly. It wasn't that big, it wasn't that small. They called who who who's got teeth trouble uh, and uh, I mean that was something a novelty to me and to others. But I had to I had toothache. So they, one day the guard, they said tomorrow or something, or next day, whatever, um, you, when you come out to the place, to the appel plats, you know, be counted, and you stay there, and you be get taken to the, to, 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 to the dentist. That was a novelty. Mm, not even a blam, and that was Jewish dentist there, and there was Jewish doctors there, but, but who, who is there? If I would have mentioned I got this problem, I wouldn't be operated. They didn't operate. Anyway, there I went to, yeah, all right, the guard took us to the dentist, a couple of people, uh, and there was Poles, I mean civilian Poles, not uh, civilians, and the guard was there with us, and, and uh, when I was uh, ta uh, called into the dentist, uh, they sat in the chair down, and they were speaking Polish amongst themselves, and actually I spoke to them as well, but the guard was just outside the door, and they said to me in Polish, um, um, keep, keep yourself, keep yourself. Um, it won't take long. The Americans are not far away in Polish. That's in Polish. Keep yourself, the Americans. So, anyway. Sometime, maybe a few days later or so, they took us out again to the march because the machine gunning and, and the Americans must have come close. We marched a whole night without the rest. We left there, God knows, in the evening or afternoon late or something, this camp. Everybody was marching out with the guards and everything. The next morning, they, uh, um, we marched to, all through the night and the next morning uh, we managed to get to another little place which which is called, we came from Altenburg, but that's called Waldenburg. And it was in Thüringen, I believe. It was forests and a, a small little, small town. And um, we marched along in, uh, behind the guards with us and all that, and then suddenly a motorbike comes from the front and uh, busy shouting, and uh, go back to, to the guards that leading us and all the rest of it, uh, the camp commander, the SS the time. Anyway, and then the machine guns come, the aeroplanes, and obviously they maybe told us our soldiers they are, for, yeah, which they were, the guards. But, uh, anyway, chased us into the forest, they were nearby, the, uh, the road, and, and there's a, a house, and, and there's the forest on a hill, proper forest. And suddenly they're starting the machine gun, and then suddenly they started disappearing, the SS, the guards, and we found ourselves in that forest, and staying the whole night. Um, and then I see some soldiers, uh, Germans, and without arms already, without the guns, and maybe a sight gun or something. So I walked over and asked them where we are, because th I knew they're not the group that let us out. You know. And they said, uh, they told us where we are, and they said, go down to the town, he says, don't be frightened anymore. And we had a, a few that were sleeping in a group or sort of, but the rest were all scattered all over the forest, people. The Americans are down there. And so we went down to the town. And, uh, and uh, who didn't have diarrhea? Almost everybody, because straight away, we got uh, a tin of this or, or sugar or, or something. <laughs> the stomach wasn't used to all that, or a tin of beef or, or pressed beef or whatever they, somebody, or, or some food, but we were not, stomach wasn't used to that. And ev everybody was ill. I mean, almost everybody was ill. I still didn't have the rupture, still wasn't operated until much, much later. I survived with it like that. I had two operations uh, soon after the war, anyway. Uh, and, and, um, and the Americans started catching boys, 
There were girls too there, because in the camp, in this Alton book, there was a women's camp as well. Not only Jewish women, but also Christian. All together, mixed up. Uh, but not with us, of course, separate. There were some women there as well, of course. And um, they started catching the people and sending them by force back to Poland, by force. Well, some people did hide, somehow, whichever way they... I remember a friend of mine, which afterwards I met him, and that was in Israel, and he was caught and sent back. Yeah. And then come the order not to do it anymore. And so we were absolutely free to walk in the street. Um, and uh, uh, Yeah, and then I... I uh, as it happens, I walked into a, to a family, to... A, was a woman, I think only then, an orderly. And I, and she, yes, and the, and the daughter was there. Anyway, they gave me a room to sleep in. And uh, naturally, m my clothes was uh, not very nice, and it was not very clean. And then somehow I had a wash, I remember, and they gave me some a jacket and some a shirt. And, and they gave me a room to sleep in. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the Americans called out, whoever will rob, will be shot, be killed, mustn't rob. Never mind what they robbed us, but mustn't rob. Anyway, uh, after a while there, in this town, in Waldenburg, we were taken to a place who wanted to go away because the Russians were coming in there to this area. I don't know if you know this history about it. The Americans occupied certain parts as well, but they gave it. It was in the in the uh, in, in the uh, in the plan between them, the Russians, the Americans, and whatever others, to that the Russians will occupy that part, certain parts of of Germany, which they did. gave up this certain parts, even the place called. They took us by 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 coach. The Americans, uh, uh, they organized, whoever wanted to go to the American side, deeper into the American side, and not to be taken, occupied with the Russians, can go with us. And so I did. Some didn't. They're going back wherever they came from, Romania or Poland or wherever they came from, and to the Russians then. And so they took us to a place called a town, Chemnitz. And then it was, it was named something else. A Russian name, 